Gianco, Ed Byrne, first, Steve McGrew. Here's a little drinking tip for you. If you're gonna drink, drink Jack Daniels. It's just my opinion, but you ladies spend far too much money on cosmetics. 12 bucks, you could have a man with a bottle of whiskey going, God, you're beautiful. <laughs> I'm a lucky man. Jack Daniels is the best. Jack Daniels is the one that'll kick your ass. That's one of those alcohols that likes to go, look over there. <laughs> Didn't see it coming, did you? <laughs> you ever had a drunk like that? You ever woke up at home? Spooky as shit, did it? I should go look at the car. <laughs> Just look at the news, see if they're looking for me first. <laughs> I hate getting sick, that's the worst part of drinking. Tequila is what makes you ill. I think that's what the world's divided up into. It's not a man, woman thing or a black, white thing, it's a tequila thing. There's people that can drink tequila, there's people that can never hear that word again. <laughs> you wanna do a shot of tequila with me? <laughs> Smell it, fuck you, man. And everybody's got a tequila story. Tequila, oh man, one time. <laughs> tequila makes you ill in the bar. That's when you know you're gonna be sick is when you're still in the bar when that feeling hits you. <laughs> you still got a drink in your hand. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> hey, we better go. <laughs> you know you're gonna throw up, you just don't know when. Nothing worse, you're driving home. Please, God, don't let me throw up in my own car. Because <laughs> you just can't come, oh, you can't come home and puke and go to bed. That's too easy. You just go home, lay down, pray for daylight. <laughs> Stomach messes with you all night. <laughs> no, not yet. Oh, <laughs> uh, chicken wings. <laughs> I better go sleep on the toilet. <laughs> You ever slept on the toilet? God bless indoor plumbing. Oh. <laughs> Porcelain ice pack. <laughs> I'm close to the water, that's good. <laughs> Flush, get a breeze going here. <laughs> Got your head on the toilet, that little rug pulled up over you. If it's the right rug, it's already cut out to come up around your neck. <laughs> you ever had the queasy feeling wake you up? That's bad. You're sound asleep, all of a sudden, bruh. <laughs> that burp with a taste, huh? Oh, uh, that ain't good. <laughs> Set you right up in bed. <laughs> what, what's the matter? I love it, I'm for a walk. You just start channeling for Scooby-Doo. I don't know if I love <laughs> Can I get you something? scooby Nay. I'll get you some seltzer? No, no, no. <laughs> seltzer doesn't make you feel better. That just makes it bubble up for the rest of the night, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you feel better? I think so. Oh. Tell you what, too, it doesn't matter how old you are. The minute you start throwing up, first thing that pops into your head, mommy. <laughs> you want mommy because that's the only person that can help you puke. <laughs> that's how much that woman loved you. Spouses and friends, we care, you know. <laughs> Not that much. You know? I'll, I'll check on you, you know. You sick in there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stop making that noise. <laughs> I'll be in the yard. I'll be at my mom's. Uh, I can't take that noise, man. It's always followed by that death moan. Uh, uh. Your mother loves you. That's how much. She'll be like an inch away from your head. Oh, baby, get it up. You ate at McDonald's. No wonder you don't feel good. I just went to see my parents again. Holy crap. When you move away and you come home, you realize why you left, huh? <laughs> they talk about the same shit over and over and over. Sometimes, don't you wish you just pop them on the head? <laughs> Not to hurt them, just to move their stories along. <laughs> you just hit them hard enough to make the needle skip for the next <laughs> Just 
stand behind. Heard that, heard that, heard that, heard that, heard that. Heard that. You know, when I was your age, oop, missed one. <laughs> I was your age, that's my dad. Well, when I was your age. According to my dad, he was naked in a cave most of his life. <laughs> they didn't have anything. The other day I was changing the channel. We didn't have remote controls. You liar, I was the remote control. <laughs> that's my job, I sit in front of him, he kicked me and I knew to get up and go over and change the television. <laughs> I went to visit them because they just celebrated their 56th wedding anniversary. I asked my dad what the secret to a good marriage was. You know what he said? Yard work, alcohol and yard work. <laughs> nothing about love, nothing about talking, none of that Oprah, Dr. Phil bullshit. If you talk, there's gonna be a fight. Men know that, that's why we quit talking. <laughs> why don't we talk anymore? I don't wanna lose the house. <laughs> I have to say, I do love sleep. I love bed in general. I think bed's just the best thing. Isn't bed just the best thing in the world, isn't it? Oh, it's here for bed. Bed's just, bed just rules, isn't it? Oh. Don't you feel like your whole life is just a series of distractions designed to get you out of bed? Eh? <laughs> Anything you ever do that wastes your time, you think, I could have been in bed that whole time. <laughs> you show for meeting the other guy's legs, you go, that's another five minutes I'm going to have in bed. Bastard. <laughs> I love bed. I love bed because that's where I have sex and that's where I sleep. And they're my two favorite things in the whole world, sex and sleep. If we do the two at the same time, I'd be a happy man. <laughs> Always envy my girlfriend, that trick. But sex and sleep, they're the two things you do. And I think they're the only two things you should do in bed. That's because I'm a bloke. Women see a third role for the bed, which is talking. <laughs> Chairs are for talking, sitting up awake. <laughs> bed for sleeping, it's as simple as that. These are the rules. And ladies, it's not like you'll just be lying there and something will just occur to you. You actually store up conversations throughout the day, like a solar panel, to then have them in the designated speaking place you see the bed to be. You can be living with a woman and not say two words to each other all day. Be like in the living room going, is everything all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? It seems like something on your mind. No, I'm grand. In the kitchen. You know what? I'm grand. Okay, I'm here for you. See you as your head hit the pillow. Good night, good night. Actually, I'm still really pissed off. Oh, what the hell? Oh, come on! <laughs> I've got a theory. It's not until women get horizontal that all the files in their head just click back into place. <laughs> <laughs> not all talking in bed is wrong, obviously. Talking during sex is fine, provided you don't say weird things like, I don't want to come yet. <laughs> But sexy talk, that's all well and good. We like a bit of that. Although, don't ask me to do that, because I'm no good at it. Because, I mean, some people are good at that whole sexy talk. Oh, do, do you think Americans really say, who's your daddy? <laughs> does, that, does that actually go on? That seems to me a very odd thing to say to somebody you're having sex with. <laughs> it's like, who's your daddy? Who's your... Well, not you, you're shagging me, Jim. <laughs> what kind of family raised you, honestly? I'm no good at it. Some men are good at it. Some men can give it all that Barry White carry on, give it all that Prince type thing of, yeah, baby, I'm loving you now. <laughs> I, feel my, I feel my love for you, growing harder deep inside you, baby. I feel my love. <laughs> oh, I can't do any of that. If a woman asks me to talk during sex, I'm like, how's that for you? <laughs> <laughs> there you go now, huh? Ah, that's grand. Good girl yourself. Great. It's so hard to get out of bed, though, isn't it? Like, say you gotta go for something. Say you gotta do something the next day. Whatever it is, you got a doctor's appointment, you got a plane to catch, you got a job to go to. So the night, the night before, you work out how long it's gonna take you to get to go where you got to go. Work out how long it's gonna take you to do everything you gotta do before you get there. Work everything out the night before with military precision. And you set your alarm clock accordingly. Next morning, alarm goes off. All of a sudden, you reassess. <laughs> says in a, dare I say it, slightly more optimistic fashion. <laughs> Suddenly your life's very streamlined. Suddenly it's like 10 minutes in the shower, that's just indulgent. 15 minutes for breakfast, breakfast is for losers. Two minutes to brush my teeth, I brushed my teeth before I went to bed. How much dirtier could they have gotten while I was asleep? I hate that when you've got to get out of bed and you know you've got to get up and it doesn't matter how elastic time has become in your head, you still have to get up. 
and your snooze button's calling to you. You know, go on, go on, press me again. Go on, press me again, go on. You know, you're late now anyway, come on, you may as well, go on. Go on, who's that boss of yours telling you about time to get up? Who the man, you the man. Come on, press me again. <laughs> Do you, ever, do you ever wake up of your own accord and you've no idea what time it is? You just hope to Jesus and all his apostles that it's not time to get up. <laughs> You're lying there and your bed's like a cocoon. I'm like, oh no, say it ain't so. Do that long, slow look to the clock radio. And there it is, 4 a.m. <laughs> And then you remember you're a milkman and you've slept in. Got it. <laughs> it's weird that though, because sometimes, sometimes, you know, you can wake up before your alarm and feel quite awake. The moment you see that it's not time to get up, it perks you up. <laughs> the fact that you don't have to get out of bed wakes you up. That's how messed up we are as people. <laughs> say you set your alarm for seven in the morning and you wake up and it's only five. As soon as your eyes flick up, you say, oh, look at that, it's only five. Look at me, I'm awake. <laughs> I'm quite perky. I don't have to be up now. Look at that, five o'clock. I could almost get up. I won't. <laughs> it's nice to know that I could if I wanted to. <laughs> no, instead I'll go back to sleep again. But just think how much more awake I'll feel when seven o'clock rolls around. Oh, foolish. <laughs> seven o'clock arrives and it's amazing how two more hours of sleep can really take it out of you. <laughs> I like drinking vodka and cranberry, that's my drink. That way you able to get fucked up and clean your system out at the same time. <laughs> I like to stay even when I get fucked up. Like I just found out fish is brain food, it, it enhances your brain cells. And that's good to know because like weed kill your brain cells. So if I eat some fish after every joint, I should be even as hell, right? <laughs> I just might start smoking fish. I'm gonna tell you too, man, I'm not from here, I'm from the States, man, so I never did comedy in London, so I'm gonna use my notes, and if the joke work, cool, and if it don't, then, you know, I don't live here, so. <laughs> I like drinking Budweiser, that's my drink. A lot of white, my white friends got me drinking Budweiser. I'm gonna tell you if there's any black people in the house, have fun and go out with white people, man. White people, they get fucked up too, man. <laughs> they get fucked up. <laughs> it ain't no limit neither. It's no, let's all chip in or ante up or let me see the bill. It ain't none of that. It'd be one white guy, one friend of mine out to buy all the beer. You ever go to a company party? It'd be all open bar all night. I went to a party with my friend Tom one time. They kept giving me beers. I had about 17 beers one night. <laughs> They was like, yo, Dion, bro, grab another bud, dude. I was like, this is all right, you know? I drink with my black friends. They be hiding six packs in their room. You know, beer that you brought over there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Waiting on you to leave so they could drink with their real friends. One time the police pulled us over and gave my friend Tom a DUI. I wasn't mad about that. What pissed me off about the police is when the police pull over a carload of people and they arrest the driver for being under the influence. Why do the police always ask the other people in the car, are they capable of driving a car home? <laughs> like we ain't fucked up with the driver. <laughs> I'm looking at the police like, duh, officer, we had a designated driver, all right? <laughs> We realized he was the least fucked up than everybody else in the car, okay? <laughs> now, how the hell are we gonna get home, huh? <laughs> Inconsiderate, boy. So they locked us all up. Wanted me to pay a fine and then go to rehab. I was like, I'll pay the fine, but I'm not gonna go to rehab. Shit, rehab's for quitters. <laughs> You ever see something in your closet you ain't wore in a while? You be like, I haven't wore that in a while. And then when you put it on, you realize why you ain't been wearing that shit. <laughs> That's how I feel about these pants I got on right now. <laughs> I never wear these pants again, I swear. 
I'm lazy though. I'll wait till I get down to my last outfit before I wash anything. You'll see me in a bar with a tuxedo on having a drink. <laughs> be like, where you coming from? I'll be like, home. <laughs> All my clothes are dirty. <laughs> I just bought a belt. I bought a Gucci belt. Pay like $500, man, for it's a lot of money. But you gotta treat yourself sometime. But don't get me wrong, $500 for a belt, I want everybody to see my belt. <laughs> $500, I'm gonna wear my belt every day. I'm gonna tuck in all my shirts, sweaters, leather coats. I'm gonna tuck my trench coat in and blouse it out so everybody can see my belt. When I go to sleep at night, I'm gonna wrap up in my blanket, put the belt around the blanket to show this woman I got style. I had this gay guy try to hit on me at Burger King. He tried to pick me up. I tried to curse him out, but it seemed like I kept giving him compliments. <laughs> I went up to the counter. He was like, can I help you? I'm like, yeah, can I have a cheeseburger? He like, what do you want on your cheeseburger? <laughs> I want cheese on my cheeseburger. That's what I want. He like, what else? I'm like, look, quit playing with me. He like, well, what? I'm like, oh, I'm gonna bust your ass. I mean, no, 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 no. I'm gonna do something you don't like. This song is dedicated to the women in the room. Or as I like to call you, Wrap 
in bubble wrap just to send it off there because <laughs> in the in the fleshy post box at the back of the poof, between the denim and the skin and just poof, just push it down in the poof, 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 in the in the poof, 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 and get the poof, trying to get the bubble wrap to pop. I'm not very good at sound effects. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> I love that sort of shit, they love it. Love it. Thank you. 